Hello once again, ladies and gentlemen of the internet. This is once again Time Twister for one final little thing for Brutal Legend for Times Tactics. At least for the time being. Welcome to the uh, dry ice mine slash quarry, by the way. Yeah, I know. Awesome, right? Okay. Now, I've given you my two cents on this particular game, which I think is awesome, despite several critics giving it lackluster reviews. I've given you a, basically a step-by-step -step of how to get through one of these stage battles, which is the RTS elements. Now what I'm going to give you <coughs> is what Times Tactics is really all about. An edge. More specifically, um, if any of you have ever actually played <coughs> Brutal Legend, or if you're contemplating doing it, you know for a fact that after you get past, say, mm, maybe not quite the first stage battle, but um, save, saving uh, the uh, initial groups and getting the initial groups of your army together, they start giving you secondary side missions. I don't have any right now because I've basically uh, um, cleared up everyone except for this one because I haven't gone back and finished the final one. But you will see event uh, when that happens, this particular person right here show up in Bladehenge. He will show up in two places over the course of the entire game. Here, uh, about halfway through the game, you will show up where Bladehenge actually, uh, where the where the army of Bladehenge holds up in Death's Clutch up here, and for the last thing that he will actually uh, unlock, he will appear back in Bladehenge. Usually, unless you're willing to actually drive all the way back to Bladehenge. Uh, you won't unlock the last uh, thing until you actually uh, finish the game, but it's your call either way. What Overslaughter basically is, is there's a, a cameo character that's called the Hunter. Uh, he basically gives you a hard time and claims that he has kill records for all of the various uh, animals that are found throughout the Age of Metal overworld. Um, and depending on how far you've gotten in the game, you can slay a certain number of those creatures for him, and at that point you gain several things. Number one, you get a fire tribute for beating it. Number two, um, you gain dominion over that animal. What do I mean by dominion over that animal? Well, um, I'll explain it myself in a second, but many people believe that the only reason to ultimately do this is for fire tributes and because you actually unlock a secret axe if you manage to beat all of them, which has the uh, steel urchin, or the porcupine's quills attached to it, which causes your enemies to explode and do damage to anything nearby afterwards. That is not, I repeat, not the best reason to do the overslaughter missions for the hunter. Like I said earlier, you gain dominion over creatures. What that does, we'll get out of the map for a second, is starting with the very first creature that you slay, the steel urchin, you get a brand new solo. The Call of the Wild. Every single time you beat one of these secondary missions and you beat a new creature, you gain dominion over that creature. And each time, and the Call of the Wild is upgraded. Depending on how powerful the creature is, you summon less and less of them, but it's actually not offsetting how powerful of a creature you're summoning. And the larger ones, since they're comp since you're not just summoning a berserking creature, you're summoning a domesticated creature. You actually can instant. Oh, hold on, let me deal with this.
Yeah, evil horse of undead lightning shit. Age of Metal, what can I say? Uh, moving on. Um, you can actually ride them. Uh, and use their attacks. Now that may not seem that cool, all things considered. Why this is ridiculously useful, excep exceptionally useful in the stage battles, is because on normal difficulty and especially brutal difficulty, if you're going to lose a stage battle, you're going to lose it at the very beginning. Because usually the way they, they elect to screw with you is what they will do is they will basically give the uh, opposing enemy force, for whatever reason, um, a ridiculous number of starting uh, credits. They'll basically let them build their units almost right away and they will just start taking geysers and uh, fan geysers and you will really not be in a position to stop if you try and send basic units you're probably going to be stomped unless you actually escort them and their avatar is usually better off than you are at the very beginning and that's their general so if you manage to hold your ground for like the first uh, five or ten minutes and actually get your units up, you probably if, uh, are going to win or at very least hold your own in a fair, uh, for a fair fight on the hardest difficulty settings. Now, the thing is, is that with these, you're talking about an insanely powerful creature on the, for the higher uh, powerful things that is immediately loyal to you that you can ride into battle and do usually area of effect attacks on all enemies that you can actually get around the uh, typical problem that you have that you can't attack enemy merch booths and things like that because their their fans are hostile and will attack you so you can't actually touch it you have to use your units if you're riding an animal you can actually attack it directly so yeah you can actually do something like ride interference and wipe out any enemy units by yourself or just with the starting forces. Well, you guys are resilient today, aren't you? Oh, laser panthers. Yeah, I know. This game's awesome. Although those are a problem right now. Anyway, bottom line, uh, you can run defense and interference for yourself for the first opening minutes, and in other missions where you have to normally split up your forces, you could just use yourself and maybe one other unit with your with the more powerful uh, animals and cause all kinds of havoc while your army is basically slowly doing a push on the other side. Now, what kind of animals could possibly do that much damage, you might think, if you haven't made it that far into the game? Well, uh, this isn't the last one, which is the Mighty Hexadon, but uh, it really doesn't get much more metal than a Gilatar. Yeah, that's a thing, by the way. Breathe it in, people. Breathe it in. Now let's take those those guys over there and pretend they're an enemy. Remember how much how much abuse I had to take from that horse earlier? Yeah, three hits, dead. Moving forward, Laser Panther. Now that guy's a flyer, so he finally managed to put it down. But, 
I want you to just think about it. I had to basically put an incredibly insane amount of damage into that horse. Those horses are pretty tough on this difficulty because this is actually uh, this campaign's on set on brutal difficulty. I climbed aboard this thing, which is ridiculously fast. Walked right over there and just started leveling them. Just before we we get we stop, I'm gonna walk over and see if I can find a uh, if I can actually find one of the uh, roving bands of the Drowning Doom. Ah, there's uh, one of their electric electric wagons. See how he feels about this. Yeah, I guess he didn't like that very much. And the cooldown timer isn't that bad for this thing. Sup. So. Oh, there's another one. Hey, buddy. So, yeah, I'm just kid killing time at this point, but when you actually see those missions, I know it feels initi probably initially, oh, I need to raise that at some point, uh, that it's a waste of time to do them, and some of the initial enemies are not particularly strong, but believe me, it pays off in spades. And if you're having a lot of difficulty beating the final mission, it is basically a game changer. I know how much that's been overused, but this is actually a legitimate use of that term. If you really want to have an excellent shot at beating, like, the game on Brutal Difficulty, and you are not a particularly good player for um, RTSs, this'll do it. Ah, there you are. Here's some, here's some Drowning Doom. There we go. Let's see if there's any more. Before I actually call this, we'll call it when my uh, guillotar dies. Yeah, there we go. Hey there! Nothing quite like killing emos to make you feel like a man. If there are any emos watching, I meant every word. Oh, uh, the br the laser panther got him. Well, face melter will make me feel better. Time Twister for Time's Tactics. Long live the metal. Time out.